Hello there, I'm Shane Young, and I get the privilege of helping you learn Copilot Studio. But before we start, I did want to let you know that I worked with the Microsoft product team to create this awesome training for all of you Power Platform rock stars. Cool? Cool. Okay, let's get to it. All right, let's add our first actions for pulling in the parent and child data from the incident. Now, I guess before we pull that in, let's kind of show you what the data model looks like. So let's switch over to Power Apps for a second. And so look, I use their cute little create new table interface. When you throw the tables in there, it shows you the relationships between the tables. And so here you can see, we're gonna start with incident mains. This is the one that's going to trigger our flow every time that a new incident gets added. And we know that triggering our flow then triggers our agent. So that's how that's gonna work. So that's our incident main. And then on incident main, let's just do one more here. There's that incident main, that primary key. So we add that one in here. So that's the primary key. That's what's getting sent over. Then you can see that over here for the witness statements, it has a lookup column called incident record that connects it back to incident main. And incident photos also has a column called incident record that ties it back to incident main. So that's the relationship. That's how these three tables are connected to each other. And we're not gonna have to do much with this, but I just wanted you to kind of see how each of these worked. So let's go back over. Okay, so to pull those in, we're gonna add an action. So we go here to actions. We'll say add an action. And remember, this is all the actions from Power Apps, Power Automate that you already know about. So we're gonna do Dataverse and all the same things we would have seen if we did Dataverse and Flow are over here. And so what we're looking for is get a row by ID from selected environment. So this is how we're gonna get that row back for the parent. So we'll choose that. And then we're going to do a next. Now we want to give it a decent name here. So get incident report parent information, get the incident report details from Dataverse. Now for authentication this time, we want to choose Copilot author authentication. The reason for this is the users aren't triggering this. They aren't interacting with it. Data changing it. So all this is going to run as me, the creator of the agent. Now, well, here we're just going to say add action, right? We're not going to mess with any of this stuff right now. Okay, now we're going to click back on. Remember, we want to rename this. That's so a little easier. So we'll do a prefer action name. We're just going to say get parent. Easy for us, whatever you want there. For inputs, so now we got to kind of fill in the blanks. Now we want to change this from dynamically fill to set as value, right? Environments aren't going to change. So we'll click confirm. And then here in the value, I'm going to use my default environment, because that's where this lives today. For the table name, we're gonna say set as value as well. We'll say confirm again. And now if we click in here, we should see a list of the tables and we'll start to type in incidents and then incidents mains is perfect. So that's what I want. So we'll say enter and that's the table. Now, if you're thinking, Shane, why are you building in defaults? Like why aren't you doing solutions and all that? That's stuff for you to learn down the road. Like, yes, all that stuff is supported. Yes, there's different ways to package all this stuff up, build it in different environments, but we're not gonna get overwhelmed by all that right now. Now, finally, for the row ID, down here, we're going to, yes, dynamically fill with the best option. It's the row ID. But what we wanna do here is we're gonna tell it how to do it itself. So we're gonna say something like, use the incident row ID provided to you in the initial prompt. Incident row ID colon and then that GUID is the way that I specified that in our flow trigger. So what I wrote there needs to translate directly to what I write here. So then that way that it can connect the two dots. Now we're gonna do one other thing, right? This is kind of my little pro tip here. So we're gonna scroll back up here. We're gonna say add. And you see there's an option here for select columns. So by default, Dataverse has got, I don't know, 4 million columns. That's an exaggeration, Shane, 40 columns. And so that's a lot of information that comes in we don't want to overwhelm the agent with a bunch of information we don't need or not going to use. So in order to make the agent think about as little as possible, we're always going to want to do a select columns. And then now we're going to go down here and we're going to tell it what columns we want. So this will always be set as value. We'll click confirm. Now you're probably thinking, okay, so what goes down here? Now this is a little bit trickier. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to go look at your table over in Dataverse. So let's alt tab back to our old diagram. And so I know that these are the columns I want, but I need more information. If we hit the view data here. It's going to show us all of our columns. And if we were to look at something like location and we said view column and advanced options, what you're looking for is the logical name. So here I'm looking for PA911 underscore location. Notice the schema name is the same word, but with a capital L, 
The logical names is what it's after, so the lowercase versions of everything is really what it is. So I could do a control C here, switch back over, and then I would paste that in. And then I would just do a comma, a space, and then I would paste in the rest of the columns. So these are the columns that I want in my scenario, right? My location column, my category column, my severity column, my incident date, my incident number, and my description. The columns that you want back will vary. Now, and if you're overwhelmed by this step, then just return all of it. It'll be okay, the agent can deal with it, but as you get better at this, the more refined you can get here, the better off you're gonna be. And this is the same thing I do in cloud flows, right? In flows, I do the same thing. I don't wanna overwhelm it, so I'm always selecting just what columns I want. It's the same syntax, the same everything. It's just a little bit of a different screen to do it. But this, right, so now we're gonna get back four or five, was that six columns? I can't count. Versus the, what did I say earlier, 40-ish columns that Dataverse has by default. Less information, better results, okay? So that should do what we need to do here. So let's go ahead and hit save. Okay, so that one is saved. That one should be in a good place. So now let's go back up here to actions again. Let's add another action. And so now we need to get the children data, right? So we're gonna get the witness data next. So we'll go over here again and search for Dataverse. And now this time I'm gonna use list rows from selected environments, right? Last time we did get a row by ID. So this time we're gonna list rows. And to be honest, in previous builds, I have used um, list rows even for that first step. It's okay, like it just returned the one row because there's only one match anyway, but get row by ID, a little bit cleaner. So we're gonna, here we do need a list rows because you potentially could have multiple witness statements. So we'll do that. We're gonna say next here. And for the name for this one, how about get witness information for the incident report? And then down here in the description, we'll do something like get the witness name, phone number, and notes for the incident report. And then down here for authentication, we're gonna change this to Copilot author authentication. And then we're gonna say add action. All right, we're gonna click on that goofy name again. And then we'll change the action name to, I don't know, witnesses list rows, something pretty straightforward there. Now for the inputs on this one, the first thing we need to do is set our environment. So we'll say set as value, confirm, hit the drop down, that same default environment again. Do you like how our environment's named after me? That total accident, long time ago, long story. Go here. Set as value here, confirm, table name. And so then for this one, we'll start to type in incident space witnesses and we'll hit enter. Okay, so that's the information. And then of course, now what we need to do is we need to add. And so what we wanna do this time is we wanna do a filter rows. So it's gonna be an OData query, very similar to what we did in the previous step-by-step, -step, but we're gonna have a little bit of a different logic for this one. And so we're gonna do something like, enter an OData style filter expression to limit which rows are listed. Use the format of underscore PA911 underscore incident record underscore value. So that's my lookup column syntax. So you're gonna to need to know what column you're looking up. And in this case, you're using a lookup column. You're gonna have that uh, format. Now, if you've been building cloud flows in the past with Dataverse, you've probably seen this before. And so we're just putting the column values looking there and then EQ for an equals. And so then this is the primary key inside of single quotes for one of my records. Now, I don't want it to always get that same one back, but I'm saying, hey, use this format, but then replace that blah, 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 blah with the current incident row ID that was provided by the prompt. So once again, I'm telling it, hey, here's the pattern, right? This is the thing I want you to send, but instead of sending exactly that, do a replacement. In the previous step-by-step, -step, we learned how to do that with PowerFX formulas. So if you felt more comfortable using a PowerFX formula, you could do something like that. I've written this probably 20 different ways over all my different tries. So different showing it different examples, sometimes being more direct, like just being like, hey, do PA911 incident record value equals, and then the row ID that you got, and that'll usually work. Like, so I just, I'm always trying slightly different variations here to, you know, we don't, have anything we'd say is the quote unquote best practice today. We're still, you know, trying to kind of discern what that is. So we just keep trying different things. And if we're getting it to work consistently, then we know we've got a good working pattern. And then one more back up here at the top, we want to add. And so same thing around select columns. We're going to do the same again, scroll down here. And so then now what do I want to do for this one? Once again, set as value, confirm. And then under in value here, we're going to put in the name column, the phone number column, and the notes column. Look up those column names the same way, pull in the column names that make sense for you, but those are the ones that make sense for my scenario. So once again, we're going to hit save. Okay, 
Now let's go back to actions. Let's make one more of these, right? We got to get the photo. So over here on our search again, we're going to search for Dataverse one more time. List rows from select environment. Click next for the name of this one. Get ID for the related incident photo. And then down here, get the ID for the related incident photo. Like I, I feel like it's the same thing. I don't know. I probably should change it to something different, but that feels right to me. So I'm going to go with it for now. We'll hit the drop down here, copilot author authentication and say add action. All right. Click on it again and then set the action name. How about to photo and then list rows. And so like I usually my action names, it's usually something specific and then something to remind me of what Dataverse, SharePoint, whatever action I use. Like it's usually some form of the actions name. Typically my pattern, not always. Okay. We're going to say input. We're going to fill in the blanks again here, set as value. We'll choose that Shane environment again one more time. So basically what happens is this whole tenant kind of was born out from a test thing that I'd set up, right? Every POC ever becomes production. Well, the POC became the entire company Power Apps 911. Oops. What do you do? So then down here, we're going to say, hey, what if we set this as value? And then we'll say confirm here. And then we'll start to type in incidents. And this time we want photos, right? So, you know, the name makes me think, should we rename the company Copilot Studio 911? Hmm. I don't know, to be determined. Anyway, we'll say add, not rename. How about add a name? We'll do add, and then we're going to do our filter rows here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say, we want to dynamically fill this one, but then now we're going to have to do some form of a query again. And so we're going to try something like basically that same exact one, because it's the same thing. It has a column called incident record, and it is trying to look up using that key that we're going to get, right? That row ID from the prompt. So. That same one should work. So we'll try it. And then one more add up here and we're going to select our columns and then scroll back down. And so strangely enough for this one, I really just want one column. So set as value, confirm, and that's going to be the ID, right? That's that primary key from the child table, from the photo table, because we're going to need to get that photo in the next step. And we're going to need to get the photo by the ID that's coming back there. So we're going to do something just that. All right, that's all I need. That's all I'm going to ask for. So let's hit save again. Okay. So that should get back the data, right? We have the actions in place. So now we could go back over here to our overview and we're going to say something like this. We're going to say edit and we'll say, all right, get the information from the parent and child tables, but we don't want that, right? We need to be more explicit. So we're going to say something like get the information for the incident report using the actions, get incident report, parent information, get witness information for the incident report and get ID for the related incident photo. So I put the action names there, the literal names that we used over on the other side. So if that reads funny to you, which it kind of does, then you can go there, change those action names and use something different there. But that should pull in the information we want. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my instructions here, right? We're going to just delete all these. We're going to say control X, like so. We're going to hit save. And now I want to do a test run to make sure that my trigger causes those records to come back the way we expect. So it will go down here. Now, if I'd ever used my trigger before, I don't think I have. So we'll say test trigger. So there's going to be nothing here. So I can't do a test trigger later on. We could just do a test trigger, but we had to do the first time of first run to cause it to happen. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to go need to create all that data in Dataverse in order to cause the trigger to happen. So what we're going to do is we're going to say cancel here and I'll switch back over to my incident report and let's go fill out a new one. We're going to click new. And you've already seen this before, so we're not going to go into it in great detail. So let's call this office incident date can be today. Severity, we'll just set it to low. Category, we'll set it to safety. Description, buddy spilled milk all over the floor. We'll say check. For the witnesses, we'll just make it me. Something straightforward, right? My name, my phone number, my fake driver's license number. And buddy was running around like a crazy dog and knocked over the milk. We'll save that. We'll go back. And then we'll upload our photo of that. Tap to add a picture, use our same little fun photo, and then we'll say check. So very similar. So we're going to say submit. So then we know under the hood, right? This is going to save the data to Dataverse. That should then trigger our flow. And then once our flow runs, it should send over the prompt. And then we should be able to look at the activity and see this data being returned from those three different data sources. If it did, then we're going to feel good that we're done with this one and we can move on to the next thing. So let's switch over there. All right, here we'll go to activity. All right, well, it's kind of complete. I thought I was gonna have to wait a second. Oh, well, good job. So we'll click in. All right, well, this doesn't look like what I wanted. So if we look in here, 
So we did get our prompt correct. So our trigger happened. We sent over the incident ID, so that's all good. But then here it tried to look in knowledge sources and it didn't have any. So it didn't trigger our actions. The reason is because even though we saved our new actions and instructions, we didn't publish them. Anytime that the agent is triggered by the flow directly, it runs the last published version, not our saved version. So what we need to do is rerun this trigger through the test process so we can take advantage of what we have saved and make sure that it is working. Or we could have just published the agent again. So let's go back over here to overview, scroll back down here. And so now under triggers, if we say test trigger, there's the run that we just had. And so we're going to say, hey, let's try start testing and let's reprocess that and see if we get a different result this time. All right, so it kicks us back over here to our session started. You can see over here on the right, like you can see that it passed in that information. And so then, boom, there you go. So if we look up here, get the parent information. If we scroll through, like see more, we should see, there you go, it pulled in the fields, just the fields we want, right? Like don't freak out, you see blank here. We told it not to get that data. So down here, we see it got the things we wanted, cool. So then if we go here to witness statements, we got one item back for that one, good as well. And then for this one, one item. So perfect, it got the data. Back over here to activity. So I wanted you guys to see this because this happens sometimes to me. So we're in good shape. I would say that if overall we have got step one working, right, and we do edit, I'm gonna go back here, hit enter, and I'm gonna paste back in our instructions, right, so we don't lose them. But what I didn't want was my agent to get confused because it didn't know how to do this stuff because we haven't taught it how to do this stuff yet. So that had been a fair thing. All right, that's enough for this video. I'll see you over the next where we're gonna talk about adding a cloud flow to get our photo description.